So today we are going to check out a very common control that pretty much all of us use on a daily basis. And that guy is up here right in Visual Studio, something called Toolbar. So right now we have two of them here. Um, and um, I just, I guess, messed it up. <laughs> so just gotta rearrange things here. But that's what we are going to talk about, cover today, okay? All right, that being said, let's dive in. All right, so I got that in place. I can't tell my mouse, mouse pad is the best, but uh, it does the job. All right, so, so what I want to do, I'm going to, so right now we have a grid here with uh, a progress bar from last tutorial, a button and a text block. So I'm going to wrap this whole thing, the grid that contains them. And I'm going to wrap it with a dock panel. So I'm going to go control K S add a tag. By default, tag will show up as a grid. So I'm going to change this quickly to a dock panel. All right. Okay, so once we have dock panel in place, I want to add a toolbar tray, which will be the housing for toolbars. So let's go ahead and add a toolbar tray. Open close. And I want to give this toolbar tray a height. Let's go with 80. And I want to dock this to top. Dock panel, dock, top. Okay, so that's our toolbar tray. So inside here, we're going to create our toolbars. So let's create the first one, toolbar. Let's open close. So toolbars, couple properties to note, uh, bend, bend. So each toolbar right here, so we have one, if you move your mouse over, so you got the four-way arrows, Got one, two, two toolbars right now in Visual Studio. Okay, so the first one is band one, and second one actually, this one is band one also because band means like a row. Okay, so it's first row. So band one, um, and then we need to set the, well, you don't have to, but I guess it's good practice. Set bad, bad, band index. We're going to set that to one as well. Uh, if you had the second one in the same, like up here, the second one would have the band index of two. Okay. So that's uh, inside our toolbar. We can add our buttons now for purpose of this demo, I'm going to start with uh, copy and paste this button from here and comment that out actually so it doesn't cause any conflicts. Since I copied, I can paste right inside here. All right. And since we are inside the toolbar, we don't want this content anymore. And I don't want to. Uh, close here I want to expand this because I'm going to add an image just like here we have images on the two bars on the buttons all right so let's add an image and I want the source to be that's I should have some images up here on the side in the solution explorer so I'm going to use this arrow image for the source. So arrow PNG is the file name. And it's too large. So let's resize the image. Let's go with a height of 20 or 30. 30 is, seems much better than 20, I think. And let's go ahead and actually zoom this in with the 100% zoom. So let's go close up. 
All right, that looks good. I'm going to copy and paste this button and add another one. I'm going to remove the content. I'm going to remove the name because we can't have the same name for two buttons and I don't need the uh, event handler just like here. Okay, we had the event handler here, but all right, good. So that's gone too. All right, so this one, I want to change the image to something like, uh, I think uh, we have the HD cloud. Let's use the cloud. Okay, let's copy and paste this one. And change this to HD PNG or JPEG, probably JPEG. Okay, so we've got three buttons. Now this button should still work because it still had the event handler hooked up to it. So if I run this, the slideshow should work. Let's actually test this out. Yeah, if you remember the, from last progress part demo, we had the slideshow, so that's still working with this button. Right now, we, the only difference is the button is inside the toolbar versus just like when you run the your project in Visual Studio, the play button. You know what I'm saying? All right, so that's all good. Let's go ahead and add the second toolbar. I'm going to copy and paste this to save some time. All right. Now I'll remove some of this names and event handlers. And we don't want this to be arrow anymore. I want this to be, uh, say, print. Second one to be cut. And the third one, what else do we have here? Search, let's go with search. All right, so search PNG. Okay, so we have two toolbars. Let's build this. I think that's in the wrong position. All right, so now it's in the First row. Right, normally, again, since this is the second one, I want to probably change this index to two instead of one. Okay. Let's run this again. Nothing should change, but at least the index is correct. Okay. Now we can move this around and re rearrange them as we want them. Okay. So that's the toolbar. So a couple of properties to note here again. So the band, think it as rows. So the first band would be all the way from on the top section, all the way from left to right. And if you change the band number to two, that means it's going to be down below here in the uh, second row. I mean, it's not a visible column but band defines where the location of the toolbar is and the index whether it's the first toolbar or the second toolbar so on and so forth so that's band and band index uh, the other thing i want to touch on it's if you want to use this overflow area this see this button uh, this button here and I, I, when you click if you have say you don't have enough space and you have more than the, more buttons than the space you have, then you can throw those buttons in the overflow space. Let's do a quick example of that. Let's say this first last one, last button, and let's say I don't have enough space in the second, um, in my band, let's actually change this to band two, and index one, rebuild this. All right, 
So I wanted to say this one to be in the overflow section versus being visible here. So I'm going to set the property called toolbar dot overflow mode. If I set this to always, that means that's always going to be the overflow mode. All right. Now, if I run this, at first that button won't be visible, but when you click the button, it'll show up. Okay. So that's what always does. As needed property. If you change this to as needed, that means as the space become less available, then it'll disappear. It'll go into the overflow section, and you have to activate by pressing that button over there. All right. Um, never. I think this one, what it does is say you have a lot of buttons and uh, way too many, and you want some of them, you want to be always visible. And the rest that's not critical for you, you can set them as, as needed or always in the overflow section. So that's never. Okay. So that's that. I think we have covered pretty much all good stuff. And uh, um, again, as if you want to hook up an event handler, you can still do that. Let's actually do a quick one. Let's say if you want to add a click event handler to this button, I can do so. And I can go back to my code behind and say that's the print button. Say I want to bring up the uh, print dialog. I can do so. So print dialog dialog equals new print dialog. And then dialog dot show dialog show. Yep. Now, if I press that button, it should still work just because it's in the tray. Doesn't mean it's not going to function as you want it to. So if I press the print button, now the uh, print dialog will show up and do its job. All right. In an ideal situation, you probably want to, just like Visual Studio, you want to use this with the window Chrome, but that's kind of out of scope right now. Maybe in the next uh, tutorial, we'll uh, go over that. Okay. You can build that custom window Chrome and add the toolbar as part of the Chrome. All right. So that's it for now for toolbar. Until the next one, I'll see you soon. Bye-bye now.